First thing you need is a pan. Uh, and you want a nice big heavy pan. This beautiful pan is probably 50, 60 years old. It's my very first pressure cooker, but you need a nice heavy pan to make uh, fondant or caramel. We're going to just make caramel tonight. You put the liquid ingredients in first, and this is a little bit different a caramel recipe than some that you may have seen before. Um, because you don't put all of the liquid in to begin with, we're just putting in the evaporated milk and half of the cream. And then we're going to put in the sugar, but you're going to need a cup and a third of corn syrup. Okay, and now that we have those ingredients in, we're going to stir it with the wooden paddle. So now that we have these liquid ingredients in here, we are only going to cook this caramel until it boils. Once you get a candy boiling, you can almost do anything you want to with it. It's when the boiling stops that you don't want to stir it anymore because then it's liable, not even just liable, most probably going to sugar on you. Now that our mixture is boiling, we're going to go ahead and add the second cup of cream. So now that we have put the rest of the liquid in, we're going to bring this back to boiling and then we're going to cook it to soft ball. Okay, we're back to a nice rolling boil now. This is going to boil up almost to the top of the pan. Um, you can control that a little bit by turning the heat down. Uh, that just means that you'll be cooking it longer. Because I have a nice big pan here, I can uh, fight my way to the finish a whole lot sooner than if I turn it down. Okay, as you can see, the full pan that we had a few minutes ago is now boiled down till it looks like there's only about a third as much content as we had originally. Um, I don't think this is quite to the softball stage yet, but I don't want to trust myself too completely, so we're going to give up the water test. I've just put some cold water in a bowl, in a bowl, small bowl, doesn't need to be a lot. And then I drop it in, and when it gets to the point that I can make a ball with my fingers and pull it out, lay it on the counter, and it flattens out, that's a true softball stage. We aren't quite year, there yet. As you can see, this is just kind of dissolved and clouded up. And if it's a true softball, it won't do that. When it gets to this stage, it goes quite rapidly from just being a liquid to being a softball stage, so you want to watch it quite carefully. So now that we tested it once, wasn't quite ready, I'm going to test it again. And this time you can kind of see that it isn't dissolving into the water like it did the first time. Okay, there we go. There's our softball, if I can get it out of here. My water's not quite cold enough. But see there, you can actually pick it out of the water. And it's uh, pliable, not firm. You can put it on the counter and it will flatten out a little bit. Anyway, this is ready now for us to go ahead and add the butter. This is a fourth of a cup of butter. And we're going to let that dissolve in there. And we're going to cook it a little bit more to what's called a firm ball stage. And it'll begin to look a little bit browner, a little bit more like caramel. While we're waiting for that, you'll notice that I have a 10 by 15 cookie sheet here that I've greased. And that's where we're going to put our caramel. We're only moving about four or five degrees from soft ball to firm ball, so it doesn't take very long for this step. This is the point that if you're not very careful, it will begin to burn on the bottom. And you don't want it to do that, so keep stirring as long as it's boiling. 
you can stir away. All right, this is the next step. This is a critical one. We're going to pour this into the pan and we are only going to pour it. We're not going to scrape it out of this pan and we're not going to scrape what's left over out of the pan. We're just going to let it drip. Now if you notice, my it hasn't gone around to the edges of the pan. It's okay to just gently tip the pan. I've made my centers ahead of time. This is another recipe that you'll want and we'll supply for you. But I've simply made some fondant and some panache. There are good recipes, especially for panache, on the internet. Uh, you won't have much trouble finding them. The fondant is the horse of a different color because people have started making fondant frosting. And so if you will Google search for cream fondant, you should wind up with several uh, recipes that you can use to make your cream fondant. I wrap it in some wax paper and put it in the fridge where it will keep several weeks. If you want to, you can even freeze it and then thaw it out later. And that way when I get ready to make my nut rolls, I don't have to spend all my time making fondant. I can just make it when I have a few minutes in the evening. The caramel can be made several days ahead too. I made this a couple of days ago and notice that it's nice and firm now. What we do now that this is set and kind of firmed up, you can slice this into rolls or into strips, excuse me. It's quite pliable. You want it to be pliable. And then I have laid some nuts out on wax paper and then you just kind of stretch the caramel and lay it right on top of your nuts. And if it breaks, that's fine. If it sticks to your hand, that's not fine. But anyway, and you can layer it however you want. I learned to make candy from my mom who was an excellent candy maker. I don't even pretend that mine are as good as hers, but I went away to college and she sent me a little box and it just wasn't enough. So I had to learn to make her candy. Now that we have these on here, my mom used to layer the caramel on very, very, very carefully. And someone showed me once that that step isn't necessary. You just pick up the wax paper and use it to roll your nut roll. It's, there's just, it just couldn't be simpler. There are extra nuts here. I'll put those back and use them again. If there are holes where there aren't nuts, you can just take a nut, press it in there. This time we're going to use cashews. And with the cashews, I prefer the white fondant rather than the panache. As I said, there are many kinds of fondant that you can make, so you can choose what flavor you want, what texture you want. I notice that this one's a little bit short, so I can either eat this down here, or I can fix my roll so that it's long enough to cover the nuts. And all you have to do is just roll it with your fingers. And then, again, just wrap it around. Use the paper, the wax paper, to kind of guide the rolling of the nut roll. Push nuts into places where the caramel 
didn't adhere to any of the nuts. And now that I have my roll made, I'm going to store it again. I like to make all of these up. Um, this recipe of pinoch, for example, will make about seven rolls, and so will the fondant. So I've got something like 14 nut rolls all ready to go. When Christmas comes, I would take these and probably cut them in half, wrap them in some fancy paper, tie string on them, do whatever you want to, and then I use these for my neighborhood gifts. But the next thing that I would do is I would wrap these in tin foil, and then I would put them back in my pan and put them in the refrigerator until I'm ready to cut them and wrap them and give them to my neighbors. So there you go. Couldn't be more simple to get a net roll.